I think the thing that motivates me most in the classroom is seeing the kids' excitement, seeing them understand something. I like having switching on, um, shifting them with their um, learning ability and their experiences, just getting that aha, aha moment. Um, any teacher will know that it's really important to build up relationships with children. And then from there, when in science especially, there is no such thing as a double question. I can ask the dumbest question sometimes. If we don't know the answer, we can find things out together and I can model the way. Science is a way for building a child's confidence. And if they don't understand a concept or anything, it's not their fault. I need to find a new way to come around and help them, you know, a different approach. Regardless of what ability they're at, um, science is a, um, it is a, a driver to um, empower them as a confident learner. I think everybody should be able to make a scientifically informed decision and from primary school having some of that basic knowledge there and built, to be able to build on that I think that's really important for later in life. The gut provides us with the energy we need to grow and to fend off diseases. As the gut moves, it also produces a wave of electrical activity. So understanding this activity will give us a useful indicator to tell us about the health of our gut. We've developed a series of devices that packed lots of electrodes and wires inside a flexible medium. This allowed us to track the exact sequence of activation of the gut. And this opens the door to fast and reliable diagnosis of digestive diseases that are currently challenging to diagnose. Winning the Prime Minister's McDermott Emerging Scientist Prize is a huge honor. It's a testament to the quality of our education system and research environment where I can train at the University of Auckland and be conducting well-leading research from within New Zealand. I plan to use this award to help train future researchers who will no doubt be making even more exciting discoveries very soon. Systemics is a, a marriage of standard statistics with some sophisticated biological models that were developed by ESR uh, and it's used to look at a DNA profile and determine all the possible DNA profiles that could make up that mixture or that crime sample. 
DNA mixtures, we have DNA from more than one individual within a profile. You can also see a lot of mixtures on clothing. So if, it, if an individual has been wearing clothing and perhaps they've shared that clothing. The evidence was previously just unusable. You could, you could tell there was evidence there, but there was no manner to express it in court in a sustainable way. So the problem Starmix is solving is that, is drawing an evidential inference from a more complex mixture. We introduced Starmix in New Zealand at ESR in 2012 for the interpretation of profiles from a criminal casework. And what we saw was a 30 to 50 percent increase or improvement to our DNA profiling success rate. We're told that we've taken usable DNA evidence in US courts from 40 percent to 70 percent. So we're exonerating more false donors and convicting more true donors and advancing the cause of justice in the United States and more broadly. Starmix can't be seen just as a software. It is a software that requires a very extensive amount of training and it also requires support and mentoring through the process of validation, which is what a forensic laboratory needs to do to prove that the software does what it says it does before they start using it in casework. So we had to create a model that took not just really fantastic innovative software underpinned by sensational um, scientific research, but also allowed us to provide the training and the support to ensure that labs could succeed with Starmix. I think the team are hugely proud to be receiving the Prime Minister's Prize because it's, an, it's a reward for the incredible amount of hard work that has gone into Starmix over the last eight or so years. We have had to work on international timeframes, we have had to travel extensively, and we've had to put in a vast amount of work to make Starmix, Starmix a success, and I'm certainly immensely proud of what the team have achieved. Tēnei au, tēnei au, ko te hōkai, nuku ko te hōkai rangi. Ko te hōkai au te tupuna a tāne nui a rangi, i piki te ai ngā rangi tū hā-hā ki te tihi o manono i rokohanga atu rā. Ka riro atu ki aia ngā kete o te wānanga, ko te kete tū auri, ko te kete tū ātea, ko te kete aronui. Ka tiri-tiri a, ka pau-pau wā ki runga i a papa tū anuku, ka puta te ira tangata ki te whei au, ki te ao marama. Turuturu fiti-fiti whakamau wā ki a tīnā. Haumi e, hui e, tāe ki e. E ngā mana, e ngā reo, huri tai a fio i te motu whānui e mihi atu ana ki a koutou katoa. Ka hao nei a matariki ki runga i a tātou me te tangi mō te atea ki ngā mate. Te hunga prihi mana o tira a rātou kua ngaro atu ki te pō, kua kapo hia e te hao nui a matariki haere, haere, haere. Ka whakahokia mai ngā rārangi kōrero ki a tātou te unga ora e mihi atu ana ki a tātou te nā koutou. Tuatahi ki te prīmia, nā nā wēnei tohu, ka tuku nā atu ki te motu whānui hei whakanui, i ngā mana, i ngā tapu o tēnā o tēnā. Tuarua ki te minita Megan Woods, nā nā nō tēnei kaupapa e hāpai, mai i tōna wā, tai nō mai ki tēnei wā. Huri tu atu ki a koutou o Aotearoa. Koutou ko a haumaru nei i te wā o te mate urutā. Koutou ko a tiaki nei i ngā hapori i ngā whānau putanoa. Me ngā mātou ranga kei runga i a koutou, hei pāinga mo te katoa. Tēnei e mihi atu nei ki a koutou katoa, no mai haere mai, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ki ora tātou katoa. Tēnā koutou katoa and welcome to the 11th Prime Minister's Science Prizes. I'm Marnie Dunlop. And I'm Dan Henry and we're delighted to present these awards as a live stream event today. Thanks Aotearoa for joining us. The Prime Minister's Science Prizes were introduced in 2009 as a way of raising the profile and prestige of Pūtaiao in Aotearoa. There are five prizes in total with a combined value of $1 million, an important investment from the New Zealand Government for our future. Today we share with you our winning researchers and scientists, communicator and science teacher for 2019. 
The interruption of COVID-19 means this year's winners have been waiting for some time for these announcements to be made public. Well done to all of you for keeping this a secret. Thankfully, we completed most of our filming for today before lockdown restrictions, and we've been able to film the rest more recently. Before we announce the winners, a special mahi to the selection judges for all of their mahi. And another special thank you to all of our applicants for the really impressive entries. So it's time to check on your best gears and join us in this wonderful celebration of researchers, scientists, teachers, rangatahi and communicators. Please remember to spread the word and use the hashtags, hashtag aroha and hashtag NZPM Sai Prizes. I'd now like to introduce the Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern, our Prime Minister, to say a few words. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa, and welcome to everyone joining us today for the Prime Minister's Science Prizes. As many of you know, we normally celebrate this event with a large gathering at Parliament, but of course COVID-19 intervened and disrupted all of those plans and all of that preparation, and so today we are celebrating online instead. I'd like to thank the Royal Society, Te Aparangi, for organising this event and to also thank the members of the judging panels for their deliberations. I know choosing today's winners would have been a very challenging task with the very high calibre of applicants. The Prime Minister's Science Prize recognises transformative science discovery and achievements from our best scientists and our emerging science leaders. They recognise our passionate science teachers, students, and very importantly, communicators. The prize also supports the future endeavours of the winners so they can continue to explore their field of science and put New Zealand at the forefront of science worldwide. Science is fundamental to transforming our economy and improving our well-being. And alongside this, and equally important to scientific discovery, is public engagement with science. Catastrophic events can happen at any time, as we've seen with Fakari White Island, the Christchurch earthquake, and now with COVID-19. Our understanding and response is so heavily dependent on scientific expertise and public dialogue. As a nation, we are extremely fortunate to be supported by our science experts and science communicators. And I'd like to make a special mention of our science communicators. Without our communicators who publicly inform, explain, teach, decode, counter misinformation and debate science matters, Many would remain in a space where they don't have information they need, leading to poor choices being made at really crucial times. Our communicators have become household names, and rightly so, over recent months helping our nation comprehend the challenge that COVID presented. However, it is not only in times of catastrophe that we need our science communicators and experts. They are equally important in leading public engagement on how science will be used by New Zealand in the future. I want to acknowledge and thank all our science experts and communicators for making a difference for our team of 5 million, particularly during difficult times, and to those that will lead us into an exciting future. I hope to be able to acknowledge all of them in the future. These awards demonstrate how science impacts many aspects of our lives. Congratulations to all the prize winners, and thank you to those who have contributed to their success. Nā mihi kia koutou ka toa. Nā mihi, Prime Minister. I'd now like to introduce the Minister for Research, Science and Innovation, the Honourable Dr Megan Woods, to speak. Kia ora tato, everybody. So this is the 11th year that we are awarding the Prime Minister's Science Prizes. Today we are once again acknowledging New Zealanders who excel in science. Science creates and builds knowledge. Knowledge creates new opportunity, which in turn breeds innovation. Today there are five award categories for the Prime Minister's Science Prizes, which allows us to recognise and support those who are high achievers in their field of science. These categories recognise those who are still at school taking their first steps to a science career, emerging scientists, a senior researcher or team leading a cutting edge science program, science teachers and science communicators. Science has a significant impact on all aspects of our lives, individually and as a community and as a country. The prestigious Prime Minister's Science Prizes help support those contributing to a quality science system by promoting and rewarding science excellence 
It's a privilege to be part of the event and I extend my congratulations to all the prize winners and wish them all well. And I just once again want to thank you for the amazing work you are all doing. Kia ora tato. I'd now like to introduce a voice and face we have seen and heard a lot of in the last few months, Associate Professor Susie Wiles, to announce the winner of the Prime Minister's Future Scientist Prize. Kia ora and thank you Mani. It is my great pleasure to announce that the winner of the Prime Minister's Future Scientist Prize is Thomas James from Burnside High School in Christchurch. Congratulations Thomas. Thomas has designed a robot for the elderly and people with disabilities to take wheelie bins to and from the curb. The design and build has taken Thomas two years. Associate Professor Don Klukas from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Canterbury nominated Thomas for this prize and says Thomas has produced a system that many adult technologists would struggle to design and make. Thomas says the future for Wheelie Drive is to improve the robot's navigation reliability and intelligence so it can identify objects obstructing its path before looking into mass production. Thomas intends to study mechanical engineering or mechatronics engineering at university next year. My name is Thomas James, a Year 12 Burnside High School student. I created Wheelie Drive as a robot to assist the elderly and disabled and those who have struggled to get their wheelie bins out to the curbside for them. My elderly neighbour was told by her doctor that she shouldn't be taking her wheelie bins out to the curbside. And once you can see what the user's needs are, then you can start to identify how the problem could be solved. This project started a long time ago. Thomas came in at year nine as a, uh, as a bright, intelligent student and uh, the project sort of led on one from another and this is the culmination of an awful lot of, of, of prior work that came through. One of the first steps is to start prototyping. So the prototyping starts on the computer creating designs. Then you move into prototyping in Lego which allows for easy changing of different parts and moving motors around and testing the actual concept as a whole. And moving on from Lego then you start making full size scales. Along the way I kept getting told that like, I'd bring up an idea and people were like no you can't do that, that's impossible. So when you get like stuck on one part of the project, I don't know how I'm going to do this, you just start working on the navigation or something and they, you're still like, thinking about in the back of your head. I've seen Thomas grow over time with his ability to think through a problem before he attacks a problem. Instead of launching into it and trying to resolve the issue right in front of him, he's sort of been able to take a step back, look at the problem and the future parts of the problem that are going to come through. And then he's been able to navigate a good strategy, I suppose, to, to resolve problems before they're brick wall problems. When other people see the project and it's that wow, when they get, people get excited about your project, you're like, oh mate, I'm actually doing something that's really cool. And it's actually, people see the use of my project and they can see the value in what I'm doing. And it's every time you get, those people see that have that reaction to your project that keeps you going and you say, I'm doing something good. I feel very honored to be accepting this award. Thank you. And very grateful for the opportunity that it gives me to continue my passion of studying engineering. I'd like to acknowledge all the people who have given their time to encourage young people to think creatively, who challenge our ideas, who offer guidance and support, but allow us to find the answers ourselves, who encourage us to persevere. I have had many mentors over the years. I'd like to thank you all. There are too many to name. I hope in the future I will have the opportunities to pay the service forward. A special welcome to Associate Professor Scotty Morrison, who will announce the winner of the Prime Minister's Science Communication Prize. Kia ora, Scotty. Kia ora, Dan, e mihi ana ki koe. Mena ko atu tahi te tohu ngā tapu ki te rangi, ko te kaiwhiwhi i te tohu e whaiake nei, tāna tino tauira ki te whenua. He mea tuku i hō te mā tauranga me ngā kura huna o te kōkō rangitanga ki haia. E o nga kōeke o ngai tūhoi. Hei aha, hei taonga whakahirahira māna, hei tānga wairua mōna. He mā tauranga hōhonu, he mā tauranga tapu. He mā tauranga kāore e kaiponu tiana e ia. 
Manohia no kwa kahanaia ki te huaki i ngā tatau o te hinengaro o te wairua ki te ao o ngā tipua, ki te ao o ngā atua kei runga ake i a tatau e iriana. Me a mātou mihi mutunga kore ki aia i te rātū poretanga. Tūhoe e mihi ana, ko hirini i whakarau ora i ngā taonga pūoro, ko wharehuia i whakarau ora i ngā tikanga, ko pōu i whakarau ora i ngā karakia, ko tīmoti i whakarau ora i te reo. Tai rawa mai, ki tēnei uri anō o koutou, e whakarau ora nei i ngā kōrero mō ngā whetū. Ko te kaiwhiwhi i te tohu a te prīmia mō te whakakōrero i te pūtai hau, ko ahorangi rangi mā tā mua o te wharewānanga o Waikato e te hoa e te rangatira. Pōtaia! Professor Rangi Matamua has come to fall in love with Māori astronomy and educate thousands of New Zealanders about Matariki. He is the author of the best-selling book, Matariki, the Star of the Year, written in both English and Te Reo, and travels nationally and internationally, sharing this book, research and findings in the study of Māori astronomy. His work has raised the profile and understanding of Matariki in Aotearoa and drawn a large following on social media with podcasts and videos in English and Te Reo Māori. His web series reached 1 million views in four months and over 20,000 people follow his Living by the Stars Facebook posts. Tēnā koe, ko Ahorangi Rangi Mātā Muahau nō tūhoi. Kei ko nei au e mahi ana, kei te whare wānanga o Waikato, kei te pua wānanga ki te ao. My ancestor wrote his manuscript on astronomy and left it to my grandfather. I'd always looked up and been interested in the stars and the moon and, you know, and had an inherent desire to learn more about that space. But I didn't completely realise the depth of my family connection to astronomy until I was given that manuscript. What I'm trying to show is that there is empirical science embedded within traditional Māori knowledge. Māori are scientists and have always been scientists and we're astronomers. We navigated the Pacific Ocean using these techniques. We lived, planted and adapted ourselves to a very complex lunar stellar solar stellar calendar system and I think by sharing this knowledge and communicating this knowledge not only can non-Māori get an understanding of how Māori took these scientific principles encompass them within cultural narrative and practice and even ceremony and religion we can also show Māori they can be scientists and still maintain their cultural beliefs and ideals. I'd like to be the interface between traditional Māori knowledge and modern science and be kind of a conduit to help people, all people, understand that there are benefits by understanding both spaces. Tēnā koe e hoa, o ti rā tēnā koutou katoa i tēnei taonga i tēnei hōnore nui. I tēnei hōnore whakanui i a tātou katoa e whai nei i te pūtai ao Māori. Just want to say thank you very much to the Prime Minister and to everyone involved who have supported me uh, throughout the years to share uh, Māori astronomy and Māori science. And it's wonderful that we can really understand um, that science has many flavours and there's many ways to understand science. And our ancestors, the ancestors of, of the Māori and Indigenous people have always been scientists and have embedded empirical science within our knowledge base, within our understanding and our practices. So I'm very humble and very grateful to Nga Kuto Kato. I'd now like to introduce Professor Juliet Gerard, the Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor, to speak and announce the winner of the Prime Minister's Science Teacher Prize. Kia ora koutou katoa, ko Juliet Gerard toko ingoa, ko o te kai tohu tohu mātanga putaia matua ki te perimia. In March of last year, we were gathering for a glitzy function at the Beehive. It's a bit different this year, in no small part due to the role that science has played in protecting us from COVID-19 and guiding the government response to tackle the pandemic. Our community also played a critical role in the aftermath of the Fakari White Island eruption 
and it's been an honour to connect our collective insights to the Prime Minister and key decision makers under urgency over the last few months. We have made a difference. This year's prizes were actually decided at the end of last year and reflect the fantastic achievements that scientists make in Aotearoa New Zealand all the time, but perhaps not in such a high profile way. The next award recognises the critical role of our science teachers, an often overlooked part of our science system, but a vital one in creating our vibrant community of scientists. In fact, I don't think I've ever met a scientist who doesn't have a story of a particular teacher who inspired them. Mine was Mr. Parrott. So a huge thank you for teaching all our kids and turning them into our brilliant community of scientists. It now gives me particular pleasure to announce the winner of the Prime Minister's Science Teacher Prize because my kids actually attended Kashmir High School. And the winner is Michelle Dalrymple from Kashmir High School in Christchurch. Congratulations, Michelle. The selection panel were impressed with Michelle because she is an excellent mathematics and statistics teacher. She believes that every student deserves a teacher who won't give up on them and instills this in her teaching team at Kashmir High School. Within her school, Michelle shares her professional development, growing the expertise of other teachers towards all students flourishing academically and personally. Michelle has made substantial contributions in a range of Ministry of Education and NZQA development teams that have led to improved outcomes for students nationwide. I'm Michelle Dalrymple, Head of Mathematics and Statistics at Kashmir High School. I know I've always wanted to be a teacher. I have huge passion for my curriculum area. I just find it so exciting seeing all the applications of mathematics and statistics out in the world and bringing them back to the students. I think it's a huge honour to be a part of forming our young people's lives. At Kashmir, we years ago moved away from that classic picture of a maths classroom with students working individually in silence. The different ways of teaching allows different students to see success and it might be that they can make some beautiful graphs and see different patterns that others can't, whereas normally they would struggle in a normal maths environment. So it gives different students different options of showing their learning and building their confidence. For example, teaching big statistical concepts, we have doozers or pugs in costumes on the internet as our populations. Cornelius has done some sampling for us in what I do in the classroom is for knowing tanga, teaching through relationships. I think it's so important that students feel safe and cared for and trust me, know that I will never give up on them and want them to achieve the very best they can. I can't expect them to take risks, to make mistakes, to push themselves unless that relationship's been formed to start with. We would love it if I could tell you that maths and stats is everyone's favourite subject. That would be an ideal world, but we know the reality isn't going to be that. So what we want our students to be is mathematically and statistically literate so that they have the knowledge to make good decisions in life. I'm always wanting to do better. It's an incredible honour to have won the award and to be the first maths and stats teacher to have won it, especially when there's so many amazing teachers across New Zealand in our curriculum area. It's a huge honour to be the first mathematics and statistics teacher to win this award. I wouldn't be here accepting the award today without the total support from my husband Mark. Thank you. A big thank you to Robin Avril and Maxine Fanku for giving up their time to nominate me, and as well as their superb professional conversations and support. Wendy Gibbs, Grant Ritchie and I have spent many hours together laughing, consoling, inspiring and challenging each other to become the best teachers we can be. I wouldn't be who I am today without them. Thanks Grant and Wendy. And a special thank you to Anna Ferguson, my statistics hero. Thank you to the support from my principals at Kashmir High School, Joe Eagleton and Mark Wilson. I'm incredibly lucky to lead a faculty of amazing teachers. A massive shout out to the Maths and Stats staff at Kashmir, their patience, their laughter and their care. Finally, the reason I have the best job in the world, a very, very special thank you to all the many students over the years. You are the reason we teach and what makes being a teacher so rewarding and satisfying. Thank you for making me laugh, 
for making me proud, for coping with my quirky sense of humour, for making me a better teacher, and thank you for being amazing young people. Welcome back Minister Woods to announce the winner of the Prime Minister's McDiamond Emerging Scientist Prize. Thank you, Dan. The winner of the Prime Minister's McDermott Emerging Scientist Prize is Dr. Mero Ekintalo from the University of Auckland. Congratulations, Mero. Dr. Miro Urkintalo is a senior lecturer at the University of Auckland. He has made pioneering contributions towards the development of new laser technologies and several other areas of optical engineering and laser physics. Professor Stefan Wabnitz of Sapienza University of Rome was one of Miro's nominators. He says Miro is without doubt one of the most talented young researchers he knows, and his investigations have resulted in the generation of valuable knowledge in the field and had broad impact. I'm Miro Ergindalo. I work as a senior lecturer at the Department of Physics at the University of Auckland. I'm a physicist working in the fields of um, nonlinear optics and ultrafast laser physics. We're particularly interested in, in these so-called microresonators. I guess the first thing to realize is that lasers are immensely useful for a variety of things. They're used in, you know, from medicine to machining to telecommunication and stuff like that. And one thing about almost all of us know about lasers is that they emit very pure colors. Red laser is red, green laser is green, blue laser is blue, and so on and so forth. The idea with these microresonator frequency combs is that they basically allow you to take one single laser beam with one single color and convert that to hundreds or thousands of new laser beams with different colors. So you can imagine perhaps using this kind of a source that emits all sorts of colors of laser light in a variety of applications where, where previously you may have needed several different lasers. So in 2013, my colleagues and I came up with a, let's say, new theoretical model that allowed us to efficiently describe these microresonator frequency combs. Now the benefit of our model is that it's extremely fast to solve. It can really be done on a standard laptop, standard desktop computer. I feel super privileged in working with, with this particular team and this, these people with whom I'm working because you know I have one colleague who's really the best experimental physicist I've ever met. I have another colleague who's really probably the brightest theoretical mind that I can think of. So all of us, when we get together, we kind of bring something to the table that, that none of us individually you know, might not have. So I guess this whole research is really a teamwork. Um, we work together efficiently as a team, and in some sense, I think this prize reflects the good work that we do as a team, not, not the good work that I do as an individual. It's really a great honor to win this prize, and I would really like to thank the Prime Minister and the government for acknowledging the uh, research that we do. And in this regard, I really have to emphasize that the research that this prize celebrates is not something that I could have done alone, but really there's a very large number of individuals who deserve to share in this prize. I won't have time to thank everyone by name, but I would like to express particular gratitude to my colleagues and mentors, Stuart Murdoch, Stefan Cohen, Neil Broderick, uh, John Dudley and Gary Genty, as well as all the students and postdocs that have worked with us over the years. I'd also like to thank the Royal Society of New Zealand for their financial support, as well as the University of Auckland for providing a fantastic environment in which to do research. I'd also like to thank the Dot Wall Centre of Research Excellence for facilitating world-class collaborative research uh, on photonic and quantum technologies that is done today here in New Zealand. Of course, I'd also like to thank my family in Finland, in Taiwan, as well as in New Zealand, um, and in particular my partner Anna for her continuous help and support. Finally, I'd like to thank the Prime Minister and the government again, not just for this prize, but more generally for acknowledging the value of science and for using science to help us navigate through these difficult times. Thank you very much. And we're delighted to welcome back the Prime Minister to announce the winner of the Prime Minister's Science Prize, Titi Notoa. The winner of the Prime Minister Science Prize is the Melting Ice and Rising Seas team from the Antarctic Research Centre, Te Puna Pā Teotio of the Hirina Waka Victoria University of Wellington, in partnership with GNS Science and NIWA. Congratulations to you all. This is a massive team effort.
The Melting Ice and Rising Seas team is made up of more than 20 geologists, glaciologists, climate and social scientists, and also the support team members from Te Heringa Waka, Victoria University of Wellington, led by the university's Antarctic Research Centre, Te Puna Pā Teotio, GNS Science and NIWA. Nominator Professor Dame Jane Francis, Director of British Antarctic Survey, says the team has put New Zealand at the forefront of global environmental research and made outstanding contributions to what is a major topic of concern for the world. I'm Tim Nash. Um, I'm a professor here at Victoria University of Wellington. I'm privileged to be the the leader of this team that's just won the Prime Minister's Science Prize. There are many important things that we need to, to address in the world. Um, climate change is obviously one of the major ones and the Antarctic ice sheet is a key part of the climate system. So what we have found is that um, Antarctica, the Ross Ice Shelf, the ocean changed so much faster than we even anticipated. We showed for the first time that if the world warms by two to three degrees, which we're well on track to doing, and we have 400 parts per million carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as the current concentration we have right now. The last time the world had a climate like that, sea level was 20 metres higher. The West Antarctic ice sheet collapsed and bits of the East Antarctic ice sheet disappeared and bits of Greenland disappeared. What we struggle with are the rates of retreat. How quickly can it go? And that's, that's really what we're interested in in terms of, of policy relevance. The work we do in the geological records feed into the work that the climate modellers and the ice sheet modellers do to understand the rates. So we can understand how warm was it, how warm were the oceans, why did the oceans get warm, and the modellers can start saying, well, we can put these numbers into our models and see what's the response of the ice sheet to warming an ocean by a couple of degrees Celsius. The sea level rise is a big issue for us. You know, we have a lot of infrastructure, uh, a lot of housing and so on, uh, very close to sea level. So as the ice sheets melt, then the sea level goes up. If we're going to be prepared for and plan for what's coming in the future with sea level rise and how New Zealand must adapt to it, this is where our research is having a direct impact on planning and decision making and making New Zealand resilient to climate change. Nā mihi nui, kia koutou katoa. Thank you, Prime Minister. This is a huge honour um, for our team of 23 really wonderful scientists and support staff. We're absolutely thrilled um, to see our research acknowledged with this award. While the majority of the team are from Victoria um, University of Wellington, I really do want to acknowledge um, some really key partners in the prize, GNS Science, NIWA and Antarctica New Zealand. So as a team, what we wanted to do was acknowledge how science-based policy is making a massive difference in New Zealand and how proud we are that a small country like New Zealand can use that policy to show global leadership. So our government committed to um, carbon zero by 2050, doing our part to achieve the Paris climate target. Secondly, our leaders went early and hard on COVID-19 based on science. And these two issues are really closely linked. Climate change still remains the greatest threat to humanity, but the science shows us there is still time. COVID shows us that as a global community, we can tackle this crisis. We now have the opportunity in New Zealand to tackle climate change and put in place pathways to make our future safer and more sustainable. As we rebuild our societies, as we re rebuild our economy after COVID, but without all the hardship and restrictions that we've experienced during COVID. So the science will continue to play a really central role in this. And getting back to the prize, we really do want to acknowledge our friends in whanau um, for supporting us, supporting the science we love that makes a difference for New Zealand. Nga mihi. Thank you to all of our presenters and winners. We have a little surprise for you all at the end of this presentation, so please continue watching. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Kia tau te mauri e te whanau. Hei kona. Time to wind up the formalities, but it's been awesome. Kia ora. We'd like to welcome back Minister Piene Henare, who will close with a karakia. E ngā mana, e ngā tapu, huri tai a fio ki a tātou katoa, huri tuatu, ki ngā kaiwhakataki i ngā kōrero i te rā nei, arā ko tēn rāwako māni, huri tuatu ki ngā kaituku taonga, nā rātou te reo, hei hāpai ake i tō tātou kaupapa, hei whakataki ake i te hunga kawikitoria. 
ka mutu ki a koutou i fifi i ngā taonga nui o te pōnei. Ko ngā mātou ranga ka horahi a pai ki runga i te motu whānui e mihi atu ana ki a koutou o tira ki o koutou whānau. Tēnā, me huri atu tātou ki a ngāti tū matauenga, nā rātou katoa, hei whaka mirimiri i te manawa o tēnā o tēnā o tātou. Tēnā koutou.